Good morning, YouTube. My name is Trevor Steele, and in today's video, I want to review some launches and landings to see what we can learn. In this very first clip, uh, the guy is coming down to land. He's floating a little bit off to the right. You can see he sets down, and the wing automatically corrects to the left. Well, as he starts to run, he actually starts running to the right versus the wing running to the left. So as he started to run, he was running the wrong direction. You want to make sure that you're running the same direction that the wing is facing, not a different direction. He was pointed slightly off to the right. The wing was pointed a little bit off more to the left. He needed to kind of turn and run under it. As soon as he got airborne, you saw he actually shifted and turned facing the same direction as the wing. Uh, you don't want to launch facing a different way from the glider. Moving on to the second one, pilot is coming in here and he starts to float off to the right. You see he floats off to the right, then notice how the wing uh, uh, dips to the right and then straightens back up and faces into the wind. Now, if you look at him sitting right here, uh, he is actually facing a different direction than his wing is facing. So he is facing to the right, the wing is facing to the left. It is important when you come into land, you come in and land facing into the wind. He is not facing into the wind. You notice he's looking to the right. The wing is looking to the left. Now, on this launch, it's going to be important that he runs the same direction as the glider. So let's take a peek here and see if he does. Notice the beautiful control. And he launches off to the right. So he launches off to the right of the wing versus taking off to the left, which is the direction of the wind. Uh, and then let's fast forward to the next one. Okay, so here he comes in for a landing, and let's take a moment and look at this frame right here. If you look at this frame and you zoom in on his hands, you will notice that his right hand is actually lower than his left hand. Uh, this is causing him to kind of move and drift off to the right. Uh, the wind is coming a little bit more on from the left in this picture here, and he is pulling more right brake. That's causing him to drift over to the right, uh, making the set down and the landing gonna be a little bit rougher. Then we'll move over to this next frame right here. If you look at this frame right here, let's first look at the leading edge of, or the trailing edge of the wing. If we look at the trailing edge of the wing, you'll notice he's got a lot of left brake pulled, which is good because he does need to change his direction back over to the left, but he has no right brake pulled. So he basically just landed this motor, uh, landed this flight with very little brake. His hands should be both buried down to his butt as much as he can with slightly more left brake pulled than right brake. That way he slows that drift off to the right and sets down facing into the wind. As we move forward, you see he takes this massive frontal that comes crashing down behind him. Uh, this is because he had very little pressure on that right side. And as soon as he landed, that right side kept going forward. It kept flying forward uh, and, and overflew him. So he needed to A, apply more brake pressure than he had pulled and B, apply more left brake than right brake. Okay, let's take a look at this video and we are going to pause it right now here. Now, the reason we pause it right here is because this is where he actually begins to flare. If we zoom in, you can see how much brake he is pulling. He is literally flaring four to five feet off the ground. This is not a good thing because this means by the time you're done flaring and you're all out of flare, you're like four feet off the ground. You're going to come crashing down into the ground. This is common for new pilots on their first few flights because they are scared of the ground. It is an intimidating feeling to come down towards the ground, uh, and, and you don't want to just go crashing into the ground. So instinctually, you pull brakes way before you should. Uh, that's one of the major reasons why this typically happens. Another one is because you stare at the ground. If you stare at the ground, you get object asphyxiation, you get a little terrified, and you start flaring too soon. Moving on, we're going to look at this frame here. The reason we looked at this frame here is because you'll notice he actually ballooned up between the last frame and this frame. He went up in altitude. Reason that happened is because he flared too fast. So if you pull brakes really, really quick all at once, it'll actually shoot you up into the sky three, four feet like it did here. Now, instead of only being three to four feet off the ground, he's like six, seven feet off the ground, which is way higher. I'm pretty sure one of these other guys could walk underneath his feet. So now he has ballooned himself up. He is all out of flare. He is all out of brake. He is all out of energy. The only 
only outcome from here is that he's going to come crashing down into the ground. The reason he ballooned up is he just pulled too fast. He just pulled way too quick in those brakes. In ideal landing, you come down to the ground, touch your foot on the ground, and then flare at the rate to keep yourself perfectly off the ground all the way until you run out of brake. You want to maintain exact altitude all the way until you're out of brake and you set down as light as a feather. You don't want to balloon up, which is where you shoot up into the sky, which you can do in a, in a less exaggerated way than this, where you slowly climb or you climb and then you sink back down. And you also don't want to shoot yourself into the ground, which is where you don't pull fast enough. In this case, he ballooned himself up. He's now six feet off the ground. Uh, and let's see what happens next. Just as expected, he comes crashing down and falls on his butt. The reason that that happened is because he fell six feet out of the sky Full brake pulled, no energy left, with a paramotor on his back. If you balloon yourself up, if you flare too soon, too high, uh, you're going to end up coming down and landing on your butt just like he did. Now, because he's got a flat top, it's no big deal. The thing's a bulletproof tank. He just came, sat down, uh, no big deal, and then... All the other guys came over. He actually intentionally brought the wing down to the left side. Helpers grabbed it. No big deal. Okay, let's review this next video. You can see the pilot's coming down. He's actually oscillating a little bit. You can see the rocking back and forth. Let's pause right here. The reason we're pausing right here is because notice the direction of the pilot is shooting off to the right. The wind is actually coming from the left. It's a common tendency at the start for you to turn off to the right because if you're right-handed, your right hand is more dominant and you're gonna be more likely to pull right brake without realizing it than left brake. So now he's pointed off to the right. The wind is coming to the left. We are already know just based off that, that unless he flares heavy with left brake, it's going to be a little bit of a rougher landing. Let's move forward and boom. Now let's take a look at this frame right here. The reason I wanted to pause it on this frame is because if you look at his brakes, you'll notice his right hand is actually quite a bit lower than his left hand. This is back to that being right-handed thing. Uh, the reason that you pull more on your right hand than your left is because your right hand is stronger and you think you're pulling consistently, but you're not. Now that he's pulling even more right brake, he, he was already diving off to the right now that he's pulling even more right break this is going to cause him to come landing even harder down to the right and let's take a peek here he starts to flare he's pulling 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 notice how he's jerking let's pause it right here Notice how he was like jerking his brakes as he was coming down. He was like stuffing up stuff, 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 stuff. Uh, what he really wanted to do in that moment right there was pull heavy both brakes, but heavier left than right. So he wanted to get heavy into both brakes, but really be all the way that he possibly can on that left hand and be a little bit higher up on that right hand. Because at the very last second, you can actually change your direction perfectly into the wind. And if you have wind, you want to land into the wind. If you land crosswind, downwind or anywhere but directly into the wind even a few degrees off it's going to make that landing just a little bit rougher which you guys can see here since he landed off to the right it's pulling him to the right he's not just landing straight it's actually getting pulled to the right he trips and falls down no big deal again that's the reason we love the flat top it's freaking built like a tank uh, and stuff like this does happen to finalize and summarize this, this is all just new mistakes that you make your first you know, few flights. These were all of these guys' first flights, and, and, and this is something that you should expect uh, when you're new, is that you're gonna make these mistakes like this. To summarize and wrap up this video, uh, this is actually something we do with you guys at Super Training every single day for about a half hour to an hour. We sit down, we review video, uh, we intentionally film about a minute of video of each of our students every single day, sit down and go through that minute uh, with every Every single one of you guys that way you can see your mistakes and learn from it just like me pulling too hard on my right brake than left something I noticed by t looking at a picture we do the same thing with you guys at super training uh, down in Corpus Christi Texas if you are interested in more information on how to get into this sport you want to learn more about the equipment we're using in this video or just want to get started give us a call 800-707-2525 my name is Trevor Steele and I will see you next time